<laughs> Let's go. All right, so I'm going to talk about the special health issues that Basset Hounds can have. So this is JT, and he's my Basset Hound, and he's a year and a half now, and he's about nine weeks in that picture, and that was the day that we brought him home. Um, he struggled with acid reflux issues, um, where he's picky about food and he's had to go take medicine, chewables, uh, for that. And he's picky with his food to the point where he has two eggs mixed with his kibble every day. Mm -hmm. um, so for the basics on dogs, uh, like this, JT has really big ears as you can see. Um, so those have to be cleaned every week and they have to be dried when he like goes out in the rain or snow, otherwise he'll get an infection. Um, but also wax builds up in there and you just use like a warm washcloth or they have actual ear solution for dogs and you clean out the earwax. Um, some of them have issues with obesity because they eat all the time. Not really this one, but mostly they eat all the time and then they sleep about 20 hours a day. And so they're not super active. So it's important that you limit how much they eat and when they eat. And then for exercise, you don't want to exercise them right after they eat or they will run into issues with their stomach and they're prone to getting sick when that happens. But they like to go on long walks. Um, and then body structure is where a lot of his health issues are going to come in to play. Now, usually that's a good recommendation for any dog or any animal. Don't exercise them after they eat. Yeah. Let, you know, let an hour pass or something because that's... Uh, you got a stomach full and then it's got more weight to bounce around. So on this side, you can see this is his ear full of earwax and that's about after a week of buildup and then we use a homemade cleaning solution and we clean out his ears every week so they don't get infected. Otherwise, if we never clean them, they'd be almost all this black color right here. Um, and then they'd be really itchy too. Um, so there's more severe health issues that come with basset hounds, and so these are just like the top three problems that they have. And we're going to talk about each one. So this one is Von Willebrand's disease, um, and it's a platelet defect where they have issues with excessive bleeding and they don't clot up as well. Um, and so like if you were like, to have it and get nicked, he would be bleeding a lot, or if he ran into something, he would get bruised, and that bruise would be like really, really big for the little impact. Um, and so, like some of those symptoms are like blood in the urine, bruising of his skin, um, <coughs> excess bleeding when nicked, or blood in his stool. And so, those can be tested for by doing blood tests or the complete uh, blood count. No, I, I can't remember. Is it a uh, low number of platelets, or is it are they? There's a normal number, but they're defective. I think it's a normal number, and they're defective. Okay, okay. So they just don't clot. Okay. Um, so there's no treatment, and there's no real prevention that you can do other than making sure that there's not a lot of things for them to bump into. Um, just watch for symptoms, and you just limit the issues by preventing rough play. Now, does, is it 100% in Basset Hounds, or is it? It's like, not. Okay. Um, I believe this one is hereditary. Okay. Most of these I'm going to talk about, yeah, this one's hereditary. Um, most of these dis diseases are hereditary, and a lot of them have like been bred out of basset okay, hounds, good. Okay. so they don't have as many issues. <clears throat> so then they also, if you notice, they have like lots of extra skin, and so around their eyes they have lots of sagging and stuff, um, and so their eyes are really sensitive, um, so they're really prone to getting glaucoma. And so basset hounds get primary glaucoma, which is hereditary most of the time. If it's secondary glaucoma, that comes from an injury. So like they have an eye injury and that would cause um, this to happen. Um, so the glaucoma is due to a blockage or clogging uh, of the drainage of the eye, so pressure builds up. And if that pressure doesn't get relieved, then um, it can cause issues with blindness and their pupil expands. Um, so usually it's this closed angle, which is when the ducts uh, that drain the fluids in the eye become blocked off because of the angle that they're at. And then the fluid pressure fills in the eye and 
that can lead to blindness. And then there's another kind called open angle, and the duct remains open, but it doesn't filter properly. Um, and so when they go to the vet, they can get treatments like eye drops or diuretics to relieve some of that fluid pressure. And then in severe cases, the eyes get removed. Um, usually, if they have glaucoma once in their life, they're going to go blind, which really isn't that big of an issue for basset hounds because of their nose. <laughs> and if they can get to their food, they don't really care. Because they're sleeping 20 hours a day. Yeah, they sleep all the time, and then they want to eat, and that's about it. Um, so this is just kind of a visual representation. Um, again, usually uh, basset hounds get this uh, closed angle where they have this blockage and the angle uh, of fluid drainage is just closed off and it stays and builds up. And then this one is the opposite, which is open angle, which isn't as common. And the duct's open, but it just gets blocked off and can't drain properly. And then the other thing is obviously with him having dwarfism and all bassets having dwarfism, they have issues with their joints. So the hip dysplasia is an issue with their bone growth where their bone um, and their hip socket don't line up properly in that ball and joint and it can rub where there's not um, cartilage. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a nice smooth it, surface. It grinds and it's uneven and those can usually be prevented with um, surgery or just pain medicine for them. Um, yeah. So that's hereditary, and it can just be fixed with, again, surgery or lifestyle changes, depending on severity. And then also when they walk, their elbows kind of come out to the side, mm -hmm. and they can have elbow dysplasia. And that's a similar thing where, like, the humerus and the ulna don't grow towards each other in the right angle. And then usually one bone's either longer or shorter than the other one, and they don't line up right, and there's not cartilage. And so that makes it painful for them. And then the other thing is the patellar luxation. So patellar means kneecap, and luxation is dislocation. So usually it's more common in smaller breeds, but because of, again, the long, short body structure, um, they're prone to having that. So overall, they're really good pets, and they're really mellow. And now they're bred to a point where usually they don't have these problems as much, and we haven't had any joint problems yet. And this is about the time when they'd be noticing them is about two years. Um, now, when you bought him, yeah. did you look at the parents' pedigree and the grandparents? I mean, did you ask, did any we, of these four, you know, the ancestors have any of these? And the, you know what I mean? We did. Um, but we actually found out that that's part of why he has an underbite. <laughs> so he has, like, such a severe underbite that he couldn't be a show dog, so they okay. gave him to him. Okay. Asked for, okay. like, a discount. <laughs> okay, I see. But yeah, so those things were bred out of him. Mm -hmm. And he should be pretty healthy. Okay. Yeah, like hip dysplasia, um, there's this genetic formula that I like. Uh, usually things aren't 100% genetic, mm -hmm. and so there's this thing called P equals G plus E. That's the phenotype equals the genotype plus the environment that they're raised in, okay? Because, like, let's say you have a breed that, like, German Shepherd. Uh, I, think, I think there's a German Shepherd coming in my morning class tomorrow. Beautiful, it looks like, I got a picture of it. Anyway, they, they're known for hip dysplasia, but you can lessen the severity, even if they're genetically predisposed to hip dysplasia by not letting them jump up real high, not letting them jump down real you know, far, and you know, kind of being careful what they do. So that's a really good genetic, uh, I, I think it's called a genetic formula, where P equals G plus E. The phenotype, what you see, mm -hmm. is based on the genetics, plus the environment yeah. that I was raised in, or is living in, so. Yes. So even though he's heavy, he gets picked up and put okay. down a lot. Yeah, yeah, and that's good because, yeah, you don't want him jumping high yeah. or low, even if he would. That's, yeah. Because I hate to see, sometimes older dogs, you'll see them, somebody will let them jump out of a pickup and it's pretty high and they're always, you know, that's yeah. just not good. You need ramps, steps, uh, and you kind of will prevent some things from showing up as bad. He's perfectly well behaved here in class. He's, he's pretty spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And you're ready for questions. A yeah. lot of sources. Okay, great. Yeah. Questions and comments, and you guys are good. If you have some experience with uh, Basset Hounds, also tell us about that, but I'll yeah. let you point. Um, I have a question about like the origins of Basset Hounds. Um, so, 
I know that they're hounds, so they're hunting yeah. dogs. Yeah. Do you know what kind of animals? I know are? that basset hounds are more for small animals, uh -huh. and they're used to like get things out of holes more so. Aren't they classified as a scent hound? Yes, they are. A scent hound. Yeah. So he will pick up a scent and follow it. All the even way if he didn't have his eyes, he would yeah. be very good at that. Like we, I took him outside the other day, and there was a cat sitting by our porch, and I didn't even see it. Um, and I don't think he saw it. And he just was standing there following the scent of the cat all the way across the yard. So, yeah, he will pick up a scent and go for it. I'll let you point to people. Uh, yeah. Um, so obviously with them having like really like small, like stump, stumpy legs, um, and them having like a lot of joint issues, would you ever see like an older basset hound like doing water therapy? Like as a form of like exercise? Um, usually they don't have basset hounds in water because they're not too good with it. Mm -hmm. um, I've never heard of them doing water therapy, but I'm sure they do it with some of them. But usually they don't like water. Mm -hmm. They don't like swimming. Yeah, well, because they're also yeah. taking their gears up. Yeah, it's, it's hard for them to get like in and out of water because of stubby legs. So. Mm -hmm. Now, is his ears. The normal length of a basset hound, or are they a little longer than average? I. <laughs> they just seem you so know, long. The breeder that we got them from, they were all about the same length. So maybe so it's I think, partly their yeah. genetics too that yeah. they bred for the. Long, I don't know when they judge them. Are they like the longer the year, the better? I don't know. And they've they've been that size his whole life because okay. he used to trip on them, and as wow. he's grown, <laughs> he doesn't really trip on them anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what is your homemade cleaning solution made of? Uh, it's like vinegar, water, and I want to say rubbing alcohol. Uh, for your ears you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. White vinegar, right? Yep. That's the same one I've used in the past. Yep. I want to say it's a, a third, third, third. Do yeah. you use a third, third, third? Water, white vinegar, and rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Okay. If you can get rid of, uh, not rid, if you can get a hold of the real alcohol, ethanol, yeah. that would be better. But yeah, it's pretty good. Other questions or comments? 